here's some of the aspects of narrative. Inv invariably in most people's lives, particularly in an entrepreneurial story, it's very much of a hero's story. So there's always an issue of the call and the quest and the realization and the feeling of inadequacy. Um, then gaining s some certain insider knowledge that then is passed on and success is achieved. So, you know, that's the general framework of a lot of stories. But actually, how that plays out in specific, in in specific instances is always, to me, the more fascinating part of it. So not everyone, for example, who's an entrepreneur is really called to be an entrepreneur. N not every entrepreneur ever felt that they had a need to be an entrepreneur. So I try to find stories, actually, for students to hear of what I would call reluctant entrepreneurs. I know entrepreneurs that had their businesses thrust upon them. So to me, again, if you spend a lot of time with different kinds of entrepreneurs, you find different ways that that might happen, which should then lead to some uh, ability to recognize that my entrepreneurial story as an individual will be different and unique than a lot of other people's, even though there might be some broad model out there. One of the things that I've studied probably for 20 years is th this issue. Is there a sequence of getting into business? Are there like the right 10 things to do? And should they follow some kind of way? And the answer is no. Some people have started with customers who didn't, they didn't really even have an idea. They just had people that they knew that might want to buy something. They came up with an idea and then they invented the business process and then they generated resources. I've had people who start businesses with resources that then have looked for an idea or customers. Or they've had a business process that then they need resources or customers or ideas and things work that way. So uh, there's no one easy format that works. I mean that's why I really have students spend as much time as possible with other entrepreneurs. I think then they get, in fact I think of entrepreneurs very much like recipes the entrepreneurial process like a recipe. So, um, you know, if you think about cooking, which I really enjoy doing, um, there's not one recipe for how to eat, make something. There, there are hundreds of different kinds of recipes. And even if you have the same five ingredients, you might be able to make all kinds of different things, doing different ways of going about it. I think the opportunity that young people have is, is that they're young. So, you, you know, I always think about life as, you know, you're taking off taking off in your life and so you have lots of runway to kind of like get off the ground and so given that one's younger the runway is really really long and because it's really long you know you can get up and crash and then get another plane and go up and crash so you know given that there's just great advantages of being young because you've got lots of time to make mistakes and learn and also uh, one tends to believe that when one's young, one's less set in their ways and less habitual. It's easier to meet people when you're young. Older people have a tendency to be less social and make connections. You know, people just, I think in terms of being young, they're more likely to network and have more opportunities to see what's going on. But also, given that technology and markets change so quickly now in almost all countries, young people have more opportunities to be closer to that than anyone else. So I, I think one of, the, one of the things that we've seen is, I think we've actually got distracted by saying that where we're moving into is going from an industrial economy to a knowledge economy. I, I think actually that's the wrong way to think about what's happening in the world. I think what's happened in the world is, is that we've had a hundred years of what I would call the efficiency economy, where we have taken whatever we've had and we've made it better, faster, and cheaper. So if you look at a lot of different things from airplanes to cars to all kinds of things. Most of the innovations and changes have just made them better. Planes fly faster, they go higher, they're cheaper to operate, more people can use them, cars or get more gas mileage, all those kinds of things. So, but the struggle has been is that the efficiency economy has kind of reached the end. We know how to play that game really, really well and we make things better, faster, and cheaper fairly easily. And it's not, for most companies anymore, a competitive advantage because anyone can do that fairly quickly. Where the co competitive advantage is, is not in the knowledge that a company has, but it's an ability to be creative and to really imagine kind of a different kind of reality for the future that people can live in and enjoy either through some product or service that that company is going to offer. So we're going from this efficiency economy where there's very little ways to create added value to a creative economy where really 
all of the value really is in these new ideas and how they're, how they're implemented or worked. And that economy is very, very different in terms of its metrics. In the efficiency economy, it's, you know, if you're making your airplane a little bit better each time, you can measure how much better it is, all of that. In the creative economy, you can't make those same kinds of predictions about how it will work in the future. We don't know what the next iPhone might be or how we're going to kind of experience the world or how those technologies will play out. And so given that, it's, it's uh, I think it's just, that, that, that to me is the real challenge is to let, this, let a society kind of be open to a lot of different changes. I think if people are um, trying to do new things and pursuing things that they really find valuable, one of the things about entrepreneurship is a market-based orientation in the sense that, and that's what I think differentiates entrepreneurship from, let's say, um, artistic endeavors, and that as an artist I can create but I may or may not care about whether someone wants to purchase what my, what my genius is about. But as an entrepreneur, I think in, inherently the entrepreneurial experience involves some market exchange where I can do something wonderful, but unless there's a customer who appreciates that and willing to pay for it, then I don't have an entrepreneurial adventure. I have an artistic adventure. So uh, to me, that's really the, the challenge then is, is that uh, the market will reward those individuals that come up with things that other people want. And they may, I think, may not know that they want them now, but when they become available, get very excited about it.